Hey everybody, JJ here. Welcome back for another Saturday of Zoom networking. I am in a new location. I'm from my Glendale house right now. That's the view behind me as I look out the window. Uh, but thank you guys for being on today. Today we have a guest speaker, really good friend of mine. Um, he's like my big brother. He's my friend, uh, real estate investor, professional uh, coach, successful investor, businessman, all around great guy. My good friend, Jim Herrera. Jim, how you doing today, brother? Great, JJ. How are you? Oh, brother, I'm always good. awesome. I, I am always <laughs> good. Good to see you. Uh, you too, man. I still remember that time we had lunch at Canner's Deli over in Hollywood. Uh, we got a couple other good spots in LA we can eat at, but let's talk about your call today. Uh, what are you going to talk about today? So today we're going to talk about um, building your team and scaling for success. Um, I'm going to I'm going to kind of weave a couple of different themes in here for the people who are brand new to real estate investing and to business. And then we'll talk a little bit about for those other people who have been in business and have a real estate investing business moving, how you can scale that in the shortest period of time. So we're going to compress like two, two days worth of workshop into about 20 minutes. How's wow. That? Wow. <laughs> well, with no further ado, Jim, take it away, brother. Thanks, JJ. Um, I'm going to share my screen because I've just got a few slides that I use as props uh, for us here. So let me see if this works. My name is JB Herrera, um, and uh, I run a company called Perceptive Insights, which is a business scaling accelerator. And I help uh, growth-focused entrepreneurs expand their business um, ethically and profitably through long-term collaborative relationships. Uh, I've been a fortune builders coach for about four years. I was the director of marketing for MLS listings in Northern California for about seven years. Um, my wife and I have owned a property inspection and termite inspection business. So really been in the real estate industry for a long time. Uh, I personally coached about 3000 realtors and about 500 real estate investors to grow and scale their business. Um, all of that experience kind of comes from my years of experience at, um, in Silicon Valley, working at Apple, Creative Labs, doing technology startups um, and information startups. So I took all of that stuff and put it into a, a system. And I've been using that system with real estate investors for about you know, 10 years or so. So what I wanted to do today is talk about building your team and scaling. Thanks to JJ, right? He's, he's like one of the ultimate networkers. He's out there doing... Um, work that companies that are much, much, much larger that have literally tens of millions of dollars don't do. So JJ, I want to just thank you and acknowledge your efforts up front. Uh, and thank you for allowing me to be here to, today. Okay, so let's, let's get going. We're going to talk about some very fundamental principles here. Um, and this is for generally for people who are starting the business, haven't got your first deal, but it also applies to those people who have um, been in business for a long period of time. You must treat your real estate investing business as a business. Um, and I know that we always talk about this. It was kind of one of my my biggest, um, uh, what would I say, bugaboos, <laughs> um, complaints, because we have a tendency to talk about deals, but we don't talk about the business that enables you to enjoy the money that comes in, right? And I'm always thinking in terms of what your next step is going to be. So let's, we'll, we'll think about your business today for purposes of our conversation as a business. Then we're going to talk a little bit about some core activities that will save you later. Uh, I'll talk about, you know, how we can get the right people on the bus, because that's always going to be critical. And then networking. This is something that, that JJ is, is brilliant in doing. Um, and we generally talk at a very high level, 150,000 feet, right? We know that we need to do some things. And... JJ's great at being able to show you how to do um, this, the social media and, and how to network and, the, and those types of things. I've got a tool that I'm going to give to you as my gift to you for participating today and being part of JJ's group. Um, it's called the 60 second hook. Everybody can use it and it's, you can connect with anybody in 60 seconds. It's totally awesome. Um, and then finally, we'll talk about scaling and multiplying yourself so that you can have an exit strategy because real estate investing is really about a lifestyle by design, right? You're able to do all kinds of different things that other people who have a 
quote, nine to five job are not able to do. Um, if you're looking for that nine to five job and working for you know somebody else, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But by the same token, it doesn't give you the capability and freedom to be able to have to do the other things that you might want to do with family, for travel, um, and the things that are important. So let's talk real briefly here. I'm going to go right into this. We'll talk about the right team. How do you hire the right team? Well, it's really based on four separate components. You need to understand that you're at your core, there's revenue streams, marketing, sales, and operations. And when you start your business, you're going to look at these teams differently within your business. Always, 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 especially if you're a solo entrepreneur that's just starting, or even if you're a solo entrepreneur and you've got lots of deals, we still want to identify who's in charge and identify the roles and responsibilities for each member of, of the teams in these groups. If we want to scale, if you want to grow the business so that it can continuously move forward, these four areas of your business must be taken care of and you must identify who's in charge here, okay? By the way, if uh, uh, for all the attendees here, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, I'm more than happy to give it to you as well. So uh, again, that's one of the things uh, uh, I told JJ I was going to provide some value, and hopefully that this is going to be valuable to you as well. Okay, Does, uh, so that's about the core team. We, we have certain questions that we have to ask at inception and at early stage growth business, and we'll say that's anywhere between the start of your business for another three years. Who's going to be in charge? How are we going to find the properties? How are we going to do inbound and outbound outreach? That's marketing. It's networking. It's the systems that go along with doing those as well. Um, because guess what? This is a business that if it grows, if you want it to grow, um, it could take an awful lot of time. There's a lot of technical components about control, um, uh, negotiating contracts. And there's a lot of different elements in a, in a uh, transaction, as those of you who have done transactions know. So we want to make sure that we have systems in place. Part of that is marketing. Part of that is sales. A lot of that is in operations. So on the sales side, we want to be able to, you know, overcome at the very beginning of our business, our fear of getting out there and closing deals, right? Again, we're going to start talking about deals, but we, we have an eye towards moving from deals to a business, but we need to get out there first. So again, on the marketing side, it's that networking component. And then after that, it's identifying who the sales are going to be with. Okay. And are they consistent with your business and the kind of business that you want to have? And I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, people have different skill sets. Some people are really outgoing. JJ is like pff, Mr. Outgoing himself, right? Um, however, my guess is, although I haven't had a conversation with him about this, so I, my guess is, He's probably needs to have somebody operationally who can handle the details of his investment business. Because you, if you're, we call it the zone of genius. If you're focused on your zone of genius, which is where you should stay, um, there are certain places that you're not going to be strong at. And there are two sc schools of thought that you're going to work on um, the places that you're weak or you can focus on the things that you're strong at and then supplement your um, weak areas with other people. What I'd recommend based on my experience for about 30 years and working with all the different realtors and real estate investors and small businesses, focus on your strengths and let's put the team together who can help you, who's, it's their natural proclivity to do these things. Let them do the, their, their zone of genius while you're doing yours. Okay. So the question is, how do we get the right people on the bus? How in the heck do we do that? Because um, I spend a lot of time, not only in real estate investing, but I spend a lot of time with, uh, with consultants and CEOs of multi-million dollar companies. That's where my primary focus is. And what's happened, and you may have heard about this, it's called the great resignation. Um, after COVID, uh, there are... I would say probably maybe you you have even seen this. Um, there are job postings and um, for hire posts in restaurants, 
um, in small businesses all around the country. And that's going on for not just small businesses, individual businesses, but medium-sized and large companies as well. Because what's interesting, um, and this is a trend and a research report that came out, um, people have had an opportunity to, to sit back and say, hmm, I don't really like the way that we were doing things before. I'm interested in being able to do life a different way because I could. They got a chance to stop and think differently. So what that means fundamentally is when we go to put people on the right bus, right? Those four areas that we talked about first, we have to really sell them on who we are and what we stand for. That's not something that we were able to do before. Didn't have to. It was primarily, here's your job description. And I know that we have somebody here who's been in human resources, has been for 35 years. Hopefully you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but we've always had the, the brief description of the business, the job um, definition, the number of years of experience, the job responsibilities and requirements, and then we the, the like to have on the end. What we're discovering is that for small to medium-sized businesses, and even for some of the smaller um, entrepreneurial ventures that I, that I mentor today, it's difficult to hire the right people. Those people that you would like to have are not responding. <clears throat> and that's primarily because we have a tendency to think that people are primarily motivated by money. That's not necessarily true. There's a, a group called the Society of Human Resource Management, SHRM. And they've been doing research on why people um, don't like to be, uh, don't like to work. And it, there's this disconnect between the hiring people and the people who are being hired. And that disconnect is the hiring people want to think it's all about benefits and cash. And on this side, the employees want to participate with a company that has a higher vision, a higher purpose that matches with their higher vision and their higher purpose. And so what we have to do, if we want to get people on our real estate investing bus, we have to, first of all, identify what we stand for, and then put that into our marketing communications and our messages. So that's really like a key element of moving forward. But how do we do that? Well, at Perceptive, what we did is we've been, again, we've been looking at this for about 30 years. And so... Um, there's, there's four components to making this. And on the far left-hand side, you can see, um, once you identify your core values, you define your segment, um, and then you define the characteristics of that customer, now you can craft a story. Your core values become the attracting uh, feature of your communications. So that we start with core values, and then we define what our unique selling proposition is. Now, you all know, Real estate investing, there are lots of different ways to do real estate investing, and there's lots of different real estate investors. So the question ends up being, if you're reaching out to a seller to engage, why would they want to work with you, right? Because they don't know you. Um, now, you may have been have a referral, and of course, that, that removes some of the challenge of the communication. But fundamentally, you need to identify the unique selling proposition, which is comprised of three components, features and benefits, something that's a bold claim. Now the features and benefits, I'm a real estate investor. I come from fortune builders. I've been doing it for five years, da, 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 da. And everybody else in the world can say exactly the same thing. It's the noise, right? So we need to have point two, which is something that breaks through that, that noise. It's a bold claim. Um, and then the third component is something that's uniquely you that your competitors, your fellow investors are unwilling to do, right? And that comes from your unique value stories. That's that other, that other um, uh, icon right there. So when you combine these components together, you have something that nobody can ever take away from you. It is your way of communicating your value proposition into the marketplace. And remember, this is about them, right? When we're going out and we're, we're doing subject to, or when we're doing Airbnb, or if we're going to do a fix and flip, we're still working with somebody and they have a problem and we're trying to solve their problem. We don't lead with, you know, all of those years of experience. It's like, I've worked with realtors. I don't know if there's any realtors in the market, in, in the, the um, audience today, 
But my experience with realtors is that they lead with how many years of experience they have, um, that they're an expert in the local market, and that um, they have all these designations. And the reality in today's market is people don't care, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, what they care about is what their problem is and how that's going to be solved. It's one of the reasons why fortune builders have people change their business name into solutions instead of being investing, right? I mean, I remember having conversations with Than specifically about this, and he was right on at the time. So even more so now. So it's important for us to, you know, it's getting right people on the bus, it's connecting, and this is the methodology that you want to do when you uh, uh, connect with people. Lots of happiness when you use these four steps. Okay, now there's two ways that you can grow your business. The first is hiring people. And the second is partnering with other people. Um, in the fortune builders world, we used to call it joint venturing. Um, in my world where I come from, you know, big business and such, what they call joint ventures and we call joint ventures in real estate may not be exactly the same. So that said, there's a set of questions that you need to ask in, if you decide that you want to work with somebody. And that is based on this slide right here. So we have to make sure that the people that we're working with have core values that are similar, right? And we start with that area because, you know, you can kind of just tell that sometimes it's not working between you and listen to that small voice. When you're listening to that small voice, you're, you're going to avoid yourself a lot of problems. I remember coaching um, a couple of investors once where they said, oh, this person has, you know, they've done so many deals. They've uh, invested money. They're private money lenders. I can sit back and I can, they, they're just going to take me under their wing and, and make it happen. Well, from a business perspective now, remember, you're the CEO of a business, so have you asked all the right questions or are you abdicating responsibility for your deal and your business to somebody else that doesn't think like you? That's really dangerous. Many times in those situations, um, the, the younger or less experienced investor is going to have a problem with that transaction or multiple transactions later. And then they're going to be held responsible because they're inexperienced and relying on the more experienced person. So just be careful, understand up front what your core values are um, and a common goal, whether it's sales, market share, whatever you want to do. Um, uh, Munif was, was on Wednesday. He was talking about doing Airbnb, for example. And he said he did one and they, he got together with his partner and they said, well, why don't we just do a hundred? So now they have a different goal in mind and they're on the same path, the same freeway to make that happen. So, Second, second part of this, um, getting the right partners, is making sure that you know who's going to be the executive sponsor. You need to have at least two people on each side that works. Now, if you're a solo entrepreneur, you're going to take both of these roles, right? The executive sponsor is generally the person who's in charge of the company who says, yes, in fact, we do want to do a strategic partnership. Perfect. Great. And we want to do it for this reason. On your side, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to say, I want to do a strategic partnership. I want to do it for this reason. I want this kind of, these kinds of people working for me. Yes. Okay, now we're connected at that level. But we need to jump down one level. And that means we need to have what I call the internal champions. And there has to be somebody on their side and somebody on your side that's going to participate that actually gets the work done. Okay, so two things. Always have the high level person who's in charge and the person who is the internal champion who's executing on uh, the partnership itself. Finally, we're doing some insights. At this point, what we're gonna do is identify what makes success and what's the gap that may exist between where we are together as a partner and what we can deliver into the marketplace. Again, this goes back to our core values. We may, for example, I was doing some property, uh, commercial property in Tucson. And we have a very defined purpose that we want to work with low class B, class C properties, because we believe that that part of the marketplace can be, uh, the, the tenants can actually be lifted up if we can find 
a set of additional services that we put into our properties. Those are more social services like um, English as a second language, uh, financial literacy programs, um, childcare center, uh, training people on um, electronic devices so that we can train them to become virtual assistants. These are all things that we, as a company, these were our core values. This is what we wanted. So when we started looking for properties and other potential partners, we were clear. If you didn't buy into our vision, okay, that's fine. No big deal. Um, you go your way, we'll go our way. But if you did want to work with us on that vision, how can we together bridge the gap between where that community is and where we want it to be? So those are the insights that we're talking about. Now, in the execution, this is really different. This has to do specifically with um, understanding what the OKRs are. Now, people don't really know what that is, so I'll kind of tell you. Um, an OKR is an objective and a key result, right? And the time frame for doing that. This is critical, whether it's for your partnerships to scale or for your team internally when you're operating. You must have objectives and key results and the time frame for from within, you're going to complete those key results. Makes no sense to say, okay, we want to close oh, uh, 10 transactions in the next six months. Okay, great. But what are the objectives to do that? What do we have to do to get there? And then the time frame that's going to take for, to, for us to, to do and complete all of those objectives. Because sometimes once you do that rel relatively quickly, you can determine, well, that six month goal for 10 may not be the right goal. Let's set a realistic expectation with a SMART goal. And I know that Jamie Saunders is in here. She's the queen of SMART goals. Um, we'll talk about you know, making sure that you do have the right timeframes in place for execution of your program. And then finally, have a specific defined time when you and your partners, just like you and your employees or your team, is going to review the value, uh, the outcome of all of these um, key results and the objectives. You must evaluate, just like every, every transaction that you do, you're gonna review it at the end of it, right? It's wonderful to think, um, JJ was giving an example earlier where somebody had closed two transactions and made $480,000 in one month. And you go, bonus, I'm done, I'm out which is kind of what more realtors do, not investors, but that's a different story. In this instance, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, what went right and what went wrong? Because it might be that your brain, because we're human and the brain has a way of creating these patterns and the pattern you may create in your head is all deals will work this way. Well, if you've been in the market or been in the business, any business you know that you can't, you can follow uh, a program, but not every transaction is gonna be the same. Not every business is gonna be the same. Not every way that we handle partners or clients are gonna be the same. So you must evaluate every outcome, whether it's successful or unsuccessful. And then finally, you're gonna make some recommended changes and you're gonna update your process and start the whole thing again. Now, scaling. Remember the four areas that we talked about before? Um, revenue stream, marketing, sales, and operations. Now, a super-powered business, this is really where it, gets, where it gets amazing, right? You don't have to have a, a huge team of, you know, thousands of people. But what you can have is a set of specific strategies that are focused by that one expert, right? Remember I said that zone of genius? So on the revenue stream, again, who's in charge? You're going to delegate responsibility, but not abdicate, respons um, abdicate responsibility, Right. You want to delegate it, and you're going to, going to make sure that they're going to respond to you, but you're going to ask them for their strategies on how they're going to generate revenue. And there's lots of different ways, especially in the, um, I'm in, I prefer multifamily. Um, we were doing fix and flips for a while, but multifamily is kind of where my heart and soul is because of the, the goal that I have, right? Um, so there are lots of different ways that we can add revenue streams onto the uh, acquisition of community, um, excuse me, um, multifamily properties. And then on the marketing side, again, what are the strategies that you want to utilize to effectively build your brand, the why, the values, the stories, so that you can attract the right group of people to work with you and to want to work with you, who will call you up and say, you know, um, and I think Munif had this, had this challenge too. Um, 
I'm trying to get this Airbnb thing going. Do you have any properties? And the guy goes, yeah, perfect. Right. What are your strategies for that? That's not, it's not an accident. We don't want to leave our business up to an accident. We want to take active, proactive steps that have defined elements into them. So the same thing happens for sales and the same thing happens for operations. All right. So now um, here's the thing. Everybody has a different type of business that they want to operate. And it's a wonderful thing um, when you can go from, you know, you kind of have a, ten we, we all have a tendency to think that it's going to be, oh, I follow these steps. I'm going to get a great result. I'm going to get money. I'm going to go to the next one and I can start building up automatically. But that's not how real estate investing is. We have so many things that are outside of our control. Um, financing looks like it's really great now, but you have to have certain, right, certain components in place today that you didn't have to have before. Four years ago, it was a much different environment. So we have to really understand that it's not a straight line from where I am to where I want to be. It's going to be, oh, right? It's going to go back and forth and it'll go up and it'll go down and all these other different um, paths that we're going to go on in this journey. And the journey is um, going to be shortened. The successful journey is going to be shortened when you identify people who can come and fill these spots in your superpower business. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, don't want to talk my talk your ear off. Um, and I wanted to, again, uh, thank JJ and everybody here. Um, I love the, the, uh, the networking group. And one of the reasons why I like it so much is that JJ is such a giving person. So if, again, here's my contact information, feel free to, to reach out to me. But I did want to say one other thing, which is um, I do have one more thing. And that's this. So as, as my gift to you and a gift back to JJ, um, I have these gifts I'm going I'm to provide to you if you want them. The 2020, if you're a real estate agent, this is going to be very, very helpful for you. It's a 2022 real estate agent business planning guide. It's what I've used for several of my agents to take them from nothing to you know, over a million in GCI on an annual basis. For those people who, who are just starting out, I, re I remember hearing who you were. There's an ultimate checklist I've created over time to starting up your business. This is not about doing a deal, right? This is about starting a business. Because remember, it is a business. You are a CEO. Um, I mentioned also the 60-second hook. This is the a methodology that you can use. You can interpret it uh, the way you want to, but it's a step-by-step -step process that you can craft for yourself and connect with anyone anywhere. Um, finally, or not, two more things, uh, a step-by-step -step action to hiring a virtual assistant. You're going to need to have some people relatively quickly, and I've written a step-by-step -step set of actions to help you hire a virtual assistant. Um, please take advantage of this because there's resources inside this document as well. And then finally, if you are a real estate investor and have been for a while, and you are at that point where you, you know, you want to scale the business and you want to go to that superpower um, area, um, I'm going to offer a, a one hour scaling consultation for no charge. That's just something that I want to do for, for JJ and for the community itself. Um, so I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, my contact is, information is there. Uh, anything that I can do, I will be more than happy to help you with. Wow, that was great. I'm looking at the comments. People love the presentation. Um, yeah, I definitely, I, I'm really inter interested in the part about the VA particularly because I've got some things right now that I just need to outsource, get off my plate. And, um, you know, the whole thing about everybody having their own skill set and needing other people to balance out. So I thought the presentation was excellent. Um, if you guys are watching this video now on YouTube, please like the presentation. Please like the video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. If you guys are on the call right now, hang on, because we're going to go into the breakout rooms. We'll do a little bit of networking before we go into the uh, uh, Q&A. So uh, hang on to your seats. Everybody else watching the video. We'll see you guys next week. And folks, hang on. We're going to go to the breakout room. Thanks, everybody. Over now. out.